dear students we'll discuss some of the spotters related to the osteology of head and neck this will be useful for your practical examination as well as for your uh, pg entrance examinations now we'll see the first question the first question is having two parts a that is identify the area pointed with the red arrow b name the structures passing through it so you know that the area pointed with the red arrow is superior orbital fissure you can see here this fissure is an oblique shaped cleft or a retort shaped fissure and it is bounded above and medially by the lower surface of the lesser wing of sphenoid bone then below and laterally by the orbital surface of the greater wing of sphenoid bone and medially by the body of sphenoid bone now what are the structures passing through it we'll see it uh, through a diagram this figure is very important i have discussed this already when we have le uh, learned the, about the middle cranial fossa so please go through that video to more about the superior orbital fissure so we can see here there is a common tendinous ring uh, ring for the four recti muscles of eyeball that separates the superior orbital fissure or uh, divides it into three parts this ring is known as common tendinous ring of sin and you can see here the uh, sin divides it into three parts it is a lateral part in the medial part and the medial part there are some structures passing through each part so we will see one by one in the lateral part you can see here there is one artery three nerves and one vein the artery is recurrent meningeal branch of lacrimal artery the nerves are lacrimal frontal and trochlear nerves you can remember it like lft so uh, lacrimal and frontal are uh, branches of the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve whereas the trochlear as you know it is the fourth cranial nerve and you get one more vein that is a superior ophthalmic vein so uh, the contents that are passing through the lateral part are the recurrent meningeal branch of lacrimal artery the uh, lacrimal nerve the frontal nerve and the trochlear nerve and superior ophthalmic vein and the intermediate part you can see it is contained within the tendinous ring okay and you can see four nerves and these nerves are so the upper and lower divisions of the oculomotor nerve and between that you get the nasociliary nerve and just below the nasociliary nerve you get the abducens nerve that is a sixth cranial nerve the nasociliary is also another uh, um, branch of the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve so you get the upper and lower divisions of oculomotor nerve between that you have the nasociliary nerve and just below that you have the abducens nerve whereas the medial compartment has got one structure that is the inferior ophthalmic vein so these are the structures passing through the superior orbital fissure so learn this uh, along with the diagram the next question is identify the pointed structure with yellow arrow and to which bone does it belong so you can see here the structure is uh, the cribriform plate and that belongs to the ethmoid bone so cribriform plate of ethmoid bone and name the structures passing through it uh, making it a sieve like structure so you know that the sieve like appearance is due to the passage of the uh olfactory nerve rootlets and these apertures are for the passage of these nerve rootlets the next question is identify the given bone with its site and the marked region so this is temporal bone and the site is left side we'll see how uh, we identify it as left another marked region is known as supramedial triangle or mckeven's triangle so this triangle you can see it is a small depression over the posterior superior part of the auditory meatus this is the external auditory meatus now the boundaries are it is bounded uh, above by the supramastoid crest 
in front by the posterior superior margin of the external auditory meatus and behind by a vertical tangent which is uh, tangent to the posterior margin of the meatus and next question is give the clinical importance of the marked region so the clinical importance is that the mastoid antrum lies about 1 to 1.25 cm deep to this triangle so that is a clinical importance it lies 1.25 cm deep to this triangle and in the newborn the distance between the mastoid antrum and the triangle is about uh, 2 mm only so other one it was 1.25 cm but in newborns it is one uh, only 2 mm so this distance increases by about 1 mm each year until the adult position reaches now we'll see how we identified this bone as left left side bone so you can see uh, one thin plate of bone that is known as squamous part that is lying upwards then you have got a zygomatic process that is uh, facing anteriorly then you have external auditory meatus that is uh, the lateral aspect and posteriorly you have a mastoid process so by this you can identify this as the left bone now we will see which is how the right side looks like uh, now see this the the plate like squamous part is lying above the zygomatic processes uh, facing anteriorly you can see the external auditory meatus that is facing laterally and uh, behind you can see the master process so this is the right temporal bone that's how you identify uh, the side of the temporal bone the next question is identify the given bone mention its parts and development of each part so this bone is hyoid bone and you can see here the parts are the body the lesser corno or lesser horns there are two lesser horns and two greater horns development of each part the upper part of the body and the lesser horns are developed from the second pharyngeal arch you can remember it is um, second or s uh, the upper part of body means superior part of body that is s and lesser horns or smaller horns so that is also s so these are developed from the second pharyngeal arch whereas the lower part of the body and the greater horns are developed from the third pharyngeal arch now sometimes the clinical significance can be asked so it is of medical legal significance because if there is a fracture of higher bone you have to suspect uh, throttling or strangulation so death might be due to throttling or strangulation if there is fracture of the hyoid bone the next question is identify the pointed areas and mention the nerves related to those areas so a is red arrow b is blue arrow the red arrow is jugular foramen and the blue arrow denotes the hypoglossal canal so please see the video on posterior cranial fossa to, to know more about uh, these two uh, foramens now the jugular foramen uh, is shown by the red arrow so uh, sometimes the question can be uh, the what are the contents passing through the jugular foramen so jugular foramen is divided into three parts anterior part intermediate part and posterior part so to do the anterior part the inferior petrosal sinus which is uh, the first tributary of the jugular vein that passes through the intermediate part you have got three nerves so the question asked here is actually the nerves but uh, if sometimes the question is uh, the contents you have to mention the other contents also so the three nerves passing are the 9 10 and 11 cranial nerves that is the glossopharyngeal vagus and accessory nerves so these are the nerves passing through the jugular foramen and that passes through the intermediate part along with these three nerves we have also got meningeal branch of ascending pharyngeal artery and occasional emissary veins and the posterior part it transmits the internal jugular vein as a continuation of the sigmoid sinus so these are the uh, three parts and the contents to the three parts now the next question is the blue arrow blue arrow is denoted uh, denotes the uh, hypoglossal canal so we know that hypoglossal canal as the name suggests it uh, transmits the hypoglossal nerve if the question is what are the contents of hypoglossal canal 
you have to mention the other contents also that is other than the hypoglossal nerve you are having uh, the meningeal branch of ascending pharyngeal artery and occasionally emissary vein so these are the nerves related and also the other contents of jugular foramen and hypoglossal canal so i hope this session was uh, useful for you i'll come up with more questions in the coming days thank you